Good morning. Good morning. Oh, this is a happy day. This is a very happy day. But, you know, it is Kansas City, and it is a great city. And today is a great day. My name is Bob Kendrick. I am president of the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum. And on behalf of our team here at the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum, our board of directors, and you'll get a chance to hear from our board chairman shortly, we want to thank each and every one of you for coming out on what is truly a historic occasion. As we stand here on this historic date, in this historic place, prepared to announce a historic celebration, it brings a lot of joy to all of us. And on February 13, 1920, the legendary Andrew Rube Foster, Calvert, Texas, as I see my friend Darwin Pitty there from another fellow Texan, stood at the Paseo YMCA, the future home of the Buck O'Neill Education and Research Center. And he uttered a profound statement that we are the ship, all else the sea. And he was serving notice to Major League Baseball that a new player had arrived on the scene to be reckoned with. As America at that time was a segregated society, so was its national pastime. And so instead of crying about the social injustice, they went out and did something about it. They started a league of their own. This league would become transcendent. It started in 1920 there with eight independent black baseball team owners, including the Kansas City Monarchs, the Indianapolis ABCs, the St. Louis Giants, the Dayton Marcos, Chicago American Giants, Chicago Giants, Detroit Stars, and Cuban Stars that formed that chartered inaugural Negro National League in 1920. Little did we know that they would not only change the game, they would change this country. And thus, as we prepare for what will be the 100th anniversary of the founding of those Negro Leagues here in Kansas City in 1920 at the Paseo YMCA, we are ecstatic to announce the fact that this museum is taking on the lead role to celebrate and put together a national celebration of what we believe is one of the most historic occasions to happen in the annals of American history. And so today, we come forth to celebrate some of those plans, to unveil the logo that will drive this celebration next year, uh, and so excited to make this announcement on this historic date. And so before I go into all of the details that we have at this moment, I want to take this opportunity to introduce our board chairman, uh, Mr. Stuart Myers, who will bring remarks relative to the importance of this celebration from the board's perspective. And he will also introduce many of our board members who are with us today uh, here to be part of this historic announcement. And will be driving the plans for this historic celebration. Please welcome Mr. Stuart Myers. Thank you, Stuart. And again, before I go into any more specific details, I think Stuart did a wonderful job of outlining some of the things that we are looking forward to doing over the course of 2020. The planning process, as you well know, is very critical in terms of what the success of 2020 will be. One of those who has been certainly a leader here in terms of the support for the museum, a leader in our city, is also with us. And I would like to call up third district councilman, Jermaine Reed, to also bring remarks from the city of Kansas City. <laughs> Outstanding, thank you, Quentin. Thank you, Jermaine. Thanks to the city of Kansas City. Thanks to my friends from Visit KC, who is here because they will play a vital role in this celebration, and we look forward to having Visit KC support. Thank you, Toby, uh, for being here, and the Kansas City Royals for being a part, because you too, obviously, will play a great role 
in what we will be impending plans for this museum. I, on my drive in this morning, I had the opportunity to chat with Tony Clark, the head of Major League Baseball's Player Association. He is ecstatic about this announcement and are, are, he and his crew are already thinking about how they can align with this and, and certainly understood and endorsed our desire to make sure that we are the lead horse in this national celebration. And, and there will be others who will do celebrations around this great country and we want to encourage that. But we want people to understand that the official celebration is being driven right here in Kansas City. We are looking to launch this celebration next year on February 13th. And, and again, in hopes that the Buffalo Mill Education and Research Center probably will be open in some capacity on February 13th, 2020. Certainly by the end of the year, I think it is our plans that the center will be fully operating by, 20, by, by November of 2020 in time for what would have been Buffalo Mill's 109th birthday. But it will open on February 13th with a groundbreaking exhibition. And you can see some of the works scattered around here of an artist named Craig Kreiner. Craig is an extraordinary artist who uses baseball as his medium to tell stories of this nation. And he, he's masterful in what they call portrait studies. And so these portraits exist. But I can tell you now, they never existed in color. And he goes back and he does the historical research and almost everything in and around these amazing portraits are recreated, but recreated through research. Identifying the player, looking at skin pigmentation, uh, the colors of the uniform, all very profoundly researched to create these works. Well, there will be over 200 of these amazing pieces on display here as we launch our national centennial celebration here in Kansas City and our changing gallery here at the museums at 18th and Vine, which we are super excited about this celebration and this particular exhibition that will be on display throughout the year. As many of you know, the Negro League Museum has six national traveling exhibitions that we will be working to get into communities across the country to also help shape this celebration. And then a, just a bevy of other planned events, programs, strategically positioned in various cities across the country, particularly those cities that had successful Negro League teams in, in those cities, working with those communities to shape celebrations. And, and so there will be a lot of activity going on in 2020 and, and of course what I want to do at this opportunity is to also unveil the logo and I want to thank our friends over at Global Prairie Mike Canale uh, who is one of our board members and the designer Adam Roth who is here with us uh, for his creativity in helping capture what we believe is the strength that lies within what the Negro Leagues represented, the determination that was a part of this story, the courage, the perseverance. All of these things stem from these athletes in desire just to play ball. Yeah, just to play ball. And I tell people all the time, they had no idea they were making history. They didn't care about making history. They just wanted to play ball. But that determination, and that courage and that perseverance would not only change our game, but more importantly, it changed our country. And, and I think the Negro Leagues Museum embodies that fighting spirit. When we started here in 1990, nobody gave this organization any chance of succeeding. Here we are now 29 years later as America's National Negro Leagues Baseball Museum. So it is only fitting that it would be this museum that would carry and shoulder the responsibility of helping a nation and those around the globe who were so greatly impacted by the history of black baseball and of course the professional Negro Leagues. So if Stuart, if you would come and join me, Adam, if you would come and join me, uh, it is my pleasure now to unveil the, the graphic 
that will start the driving process of this celebration. They tell me that we should pull this drop, co drop cover from the back. And, and so, and if you would, please. <laughs> celebration uh, next year, and, and I think you will see a lot of merchandise and apparel featuring this mark, and there will be many, many opportunities during the course of the year for us to talk about this museum and to share hundreds, literally hundreds of stories about this rich history that started around the corner on this very historic date, February 13th. 1920. And in 100 years from this day, we hope that this date will become a day of national recognition. We hope that people will join us in carrying the banner of the Negro Leagues and the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum. So again, on behalf of our team here at the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum, thank you to all the members of the media. Thank you to all of our friends who came out to support the announcement today, and certainly if any members of the media has any questions, myself, uh, Stuart, and others will be happy to uh, respond to any questions that you may have also will be available for any one-on-one -on -one interviews that you might want to conduct before you get out of here. Anybody have, have any questions? You must do a pretty good job. <laughs> <laughs> But if you don't have any questions, like I said, uh, myself and others will be available for any one-on-one -on -one interviews that you guys may want to do. But again, thank you all so much for coming out and being a part of this. Stay tuned for the plans as they are being uh, unveiled between now and, of course, February 13th of 2020 as we embark on what I believe to be the most significant effort ever by the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum and perhaps its most important endeavor since we actually built this great museum in 1990 and opened this space in 1997. Thank you all so much.